So I just saw Frozen 2, and it wasn't great. It wasn't a terrible movie or anything, it was just kind of meh, but it could have been much, much better than it was. Now for some quick context, I actually liked the original Frozen. Yeah, it's definitely an overrated movie, but I think it's one of those films that a lot of people just hate because it's something that's cool to hate. When I first saw this movie, I gave it a 6 out of 10, and before I saw this new movie, I rewatched it, and yeah, my score hasn't changed. But upon rewatch, I discovered that not only does Frozen hold up, but I actually appreciated it more, especially in terms of the film's music. Now with a sequel, you should aim to improve improve upon the original. I mean, yeah, the main goal of a sequel is to continue the story from the first movie, but it should also be noted that sequels should be better than the original since you've already had one attempt. That being said, the only thing Frozen 2 has that's better than the original is the visuals. The animation is breathtaking and the visuals in this movie are overall beautiful, but that's the only thing they did better. Some aspects of the movie were on par, but most of this movie just feels like a downgrade, and that's including the music. I wouldn't call all of the music in Frozen great, but at the same same time, it's all memorable, and the songs that are good are absolutely fantastic. Then you go over to Frozen 2, and despite having seen it last night and having listened to some of the songs since then, I can literally only remember one of them. That being said, that one of them, Into the Unknown, is the best song to come out of either of these two movies, and quite honestly, it might actually be my favourite song to come out of a movie all year. I've not decided if it's better than Stand Up from Harriet yet, but they're both pretty fantastic songs. On the flip side though, this movie also has all of the worst songs to come out of either of these two movies. Kristoff's song in this movie is genuinely fucking awful. It's clear that it's supposed to be very tongue-in-cheek, but the only funny thing about it was just how stupid and bad it was. The audience is clearly supposed to feel bad for Kristoff, but then he breaks into this shitty 90s ballad. Olaf also has a really shitty song in this movie. There are overall a few bad songs in this movie, and of course they're also really unmemorable. To say the very least, when people leave this movie, they will not be humming Some Things Never Change. The musical score was only only ever noticeable in the movie when it just played as a motif of another song in the movie. Like 5 or 10 minutes after we hear Into the Unknown, they just kind of play it again in the background of the scene, but this time it's just orchestral. And it really did not fit the scene at all. Throughout the movie, it is very clear they are aware their best song is Into the Unknown, so they just kind of spam it. They also spam their second best song, All Is Found, but they actually spam it as a song. Nearly every time that song was used, it was used as a song within the movie's universe, but with Into the Unknown they just kind of shoved it wherever they could. And since they knew what their two best songs were, they decided to throw covers of them into the end credits like they did with Demi Lovato and Let It Go. For All Is Found, we're treated to an absolutely phenomenal Casey Musgraves cover. She has an absolutely fantastic voice and fits the song very well. But in order to get to that, we have to sit through Brendan Urie's rendition of Into the Unknown. And who boy does he ever sound particularly terrible on this song. Seriously, his vocals on this cover are so unbelievably torn torturous that had I not seen this film with people who wanted to hear his cover and had I not wanted to hear Casey Musgraves, I absolutely would have walked out at this point. It reminded me of the DJ Khaled song at the end of Aladdin, but not funny this time. I probably wouldn't have even minded the spamming of this song if it wasn't for the fact that it led to this cover. Just play the Adina Menzel version again. She has a beautiful voice, and her vocals are part of the reason that song works so well. Just because you hit high high notes for a living does not mean you can sing every song with high notes in them. I'm also not quite sure about the consistency of how the music works in this movie. Whenever Olaf is singing in a song, he sounds great, but whenever he's not, he sounds awful as a joke, as like, oh haha, ha, he doesn't have a very good voice. And it makes sense, because performances in musicals usually aren't literal. Songs and musicals are usually used for storytelling or to show a character's emotions, but much less often do characters actually just start singing in musicals and have it be what they're actually doing. But then later on in the movie, Elsa directly acknowledges the existence of Let It Go. So are the songs in this movie literal or are they not? There's also a scene where Elsa jokingly references Do You Want to Build a Snowman? I understand that the film wants to try and provide fan service, but it was just kind of distracting. Acting. I don't expect everything in your movie to add up, but can you at least be consistent? Speaking of performances, the acting in this movie was fine, I guess. Adina Menzel and Kristen Bell were both great, but everyone else was just kind of serviceable. Everyone else, excluding the child actors at the start of the movie, who were genuinely awful. They weren't in it for long, but when they were in it, they were bad. 
I really liked all of the designs in the movie. The film was well paced and at no point was I ever bored. There were some fun scenes, some of the comedy was funny. I liked the dynamic between Elsa and Donna. And that's all the movie really had going for it. The movie really rides on its music and its visuals and as a result it forgets about some of the important things, like the script. This is quite honestly one of the most predictable cookie cutter bullshit stories I've seen in a movie all year. Every time a big reveal was remotely set up it became instantly obvious. Characters will just start talking about random things so they can plant seeds for things you'll find out later on. None of these scenes have any purpose except for to set up these things that are revealed later on, but the setups are so painfully transparent that by the time the reveals actually come around it feels insulting to the viewers. In terms of the script, it's also painfully obvious that the film doesn't really know what to do with some of its characters. I mean, all of their arcs were already completed in the first movie, so what can you do with them now? And some of of the character arcs that they hand out in this movie are the type of shit you'd expect to see on a straight to DVD sequel, especially when it comes to Kristoff's character. For most of the movie he's just trying to propose to Anna in some really unfunny sequences. She'll either get distracted or he'll use the wrong words or he'll speak to the wrong person. And then after a while he gets separated from Anna and sings that really crappy song I already told you about. And then he just disappears for the rest of the movie. He does show up again near the end but it felt like the script just had no idea what to do with him so they didn't do anything. Literally all he does the entire movie is try to propose to Anna and pull her onto this van when he's riding past her. That's all he does the entire movie and it gets exhausting to watch him. His character was really annoying and quite honestly one of the worst things about the entire movie. Olaf was also really annoying in this movie and he got given way too much screen time. And for some reason they give him a subplot about growing up and having an existential crisis? How does this movie have five writer's credits? Some of the dialogue in this movie is porn script levels of bad. I understand that this movie's target demographic is young children, but that does not mean that they just don't get to try. There are some things about this movie I want to talk about that are spoilers, so I'm going to enter spoiler talk now. If you don't want to hear spoilers for this movie, click the time code on the screen now. Three, two, one, go. So basically at one point, the big Frozen gang splits up and Anna and Olaf end up separated from Elsa. Elsa goes off and tames the water spirit and then goes to this mythical place where she finds out some predictable plot twists and then winds up getting frozen. Meanwhile, Anna and Olaf get trapped in a cave, but Olaf finds a way out. But because Elsa is frozen and Elsa created Olaf, Olaf then begins to die. He starts disintegrating into snowflakes all Infinity War style, but at no point during the scene does his mass ever get any smaller. And so you're just watching snowflakes flow off of him as he stays the exact same and gets kind of tired. It was already really unintentionally funny, but then it became very very apparent they weren't sure how to show Olaf's death, so they just fade into a scene that takes place after he's died. And to top it all off, the scene they fade into is a musical number that accidentally starts off with a meme. Hello darkness, I'm ready to succumb. Seriously, I can't stress enough how hard I started laughing at this point. Anyways, Anna realizes she has to destroy a dam. Basically, the reason the Enchanted Forest is cut off with a thick mist is because Arendellians betrayed the Norfoldra. They gifted them with a dam in order to help their crops, but in secret they knew that it would only damage them. And then they killed the leader of the Norfoldra, and then they all started fighting, and then the forest became engulfed in this thick mist. So Anna has to destroy the dam that will in turn destroy Arendelle in order to free the forest. Arendelle was already evacuated at the start of the movie, so it seems like a win-win to her. But the movie heavily underestimates the consequences of breaking a dam. First off, Anna does not tell anybody that she is doing this. Considering the fact that there are copious amounts of water in that dam, don't you want to make sure everyone's safe before you unleash a ton of water onto everyone? The enchanted forest is not evacuated and it cannot be evacuated. Evacuated. As she's getting earth giants to throw rocks at the dam, she eventually actually encounters people who she can tell about her plan. These people being Kristoff and a group of Arendellian soldiers who then help her. But what they all seem to forget is that the enchanted forest is still surrounded by thick mist that cannot be left. When the gang first enter the enchanted forest, Elsa tries shooting an icicle out of it and it bounces back in. Why do any of you think this is going to work? And more importantly, why does it work? Based on all of the rules that this movie has set up, this plan should fail miserably. 
Did they just kind of forget what they already wrote and put in the movie? Did nobody say anything about this? Anyways, Elsa unfreezes and realizes she needs to go save Arendelle, so she rides the water spirit to Arendelle just in time for the dam's water to arrive and then just shoots a big ice ramp so it all goes backwards. And by backwards, I don't mean it goes all the way back. I mean it goes up the ice ramp, down the ice ramp, and then just is instantly settled. Based on just how much water there was, there was no reason that the water levels wouldn't just rise and still be a danger to Arendelle. And based on how water displacement works, the water could have easily gone around the ramp. She didn't make a big ice wall or anything, she just made a ramp in the way of the water. There is tons of room around this ramp for the water to still get to Arendelle, but it just doesn't, I guess. So yeah, it was pretty stupid. Anyways, this movie definitely wasn't a terrible film, but it was held back by quite a lot. There was also some bad editing and some scenes with some bad audio mixing. But really, this movie's problem is its script. If this movie just knew what to do with its characters, was less predictable and less stupid, then it probably would have been a lot better. Still, at least it was entertaining, I guess. Check this movie out if you want, you almost definitely will. Of the 14 person group I saw this in, I like this the least, so don't take my word for it. But personally, I just wish this movie was a much better movie. And I'm giving Frozen 2 a 5 out of 10. That's the end of this video, like, share, subscribe, I'm bad at outros, and I'll see you in whatever I do next.